We're gonna make some much needed modifications to this IPD intake plenum on a Porsche 986. We're doing that, uh, but let me show you some shots beforehand and then we'll show you the shots afterwards and we'll see if we can make any improvements. First of all, the only reason we have this IPD plenum is it's the easiest way to bolt up the larger throttle body on the 911, so if you're from the 911. So if you're trying to get more air to come through that system, the IPD plenum is a great way to go do that. It's, it's literally bolt on. The parts that I don't like is number one, it's made out of aluminum and it's heavier. Now the aluminum is more conductive than is plastic. The air inside the plenum is coming from the outside. You want that air to stay cool and you want, and the air outside of this plenum is in the engine bay, which is much warmer. And so if anything, you'd want it to be perfectly insulated. So the idea that they're making this out of aluminum is quite frankly a, a dumb design because you're getting more heat transfer. The second thing that they do is they put all these little dimples in here and they say, well, it reduces the turbulence. Now, the only time that that would ever make sense is maybe right before the intake valve where you're trying to get the air to tumble a little bit more. But anywhere else in the line, you're just trying to reduce the friction as much as possible to let that air flow through easily. So these dimples make no difference whatsoever. The surface is rough. And so if anything, you're reducing the air resistance. So we're going to do two things. Number one, we're going to take off these cooling fins. That's going to save the weight. It's also gonna minimize the heat transfer from the outside to the inside, because those are effectively cooling fins. They're allowing this to warm up more from the engine, hence increasing the air temperature even more. Um, if you look at IPD's website, they'll say things about the higher conductivity, thermal conductivity. Well, it does have higher thermal conductivity, but in this situation, you don't want higher thermal conductivity. You want really low thermal conductivity. So. We're gonna cut these off and we're gonna clean up this inside to get rid of the roughness and we'll see how difficult it is to, to take out those plenums as well. Stay tuned. The outer brackets. I made the mistake we did not weigh it before and after, but I can tell you just from picking it up, it feels significantly lighter. Um, we did not go all the way down in here. I'm not sure how thick those walls are, so we didn't wanna push fate too far. But step one, complete. Our work is done, let's see what we have here. First, as we said before, we've taken care of the outside and cleaned this up to get rid of those cooling fins that are actually were backwards because it would catalyze the heat from the outside to go to the inside as the outside is warmer. That was backwards. The second thing is we cleaned up the inside. Now, if you remember, this was really rough before and it was dimpled like a golf ball. So what we've done is we have taken out ground out all of those dimples and smooth it out to about a 200 grit polishing pad. Uh, you can see a few dimples that are left there. We've filled those with epoxy, so they're still actually fairly smooth. The other thing we did is there was a hole going through the center there across. We filled those in with epoxy. I think those were manufacturing holes and provided no benefit to getting airflow to go faster. This is the intake side. Let's take a closer look. You can see where we've cleaned up those uh, that splitter. Almost all of the speed bumps are gone. In this vehicle, we are going to take out the AOS, air oil separator. And so we've just plugged that up. And we did that by putting epoxy in there so it's nice and smooth. So we have a nice smooth air flow over it and even small things like this little access nipple we filled up as well. So. When air is coming through there from this direction out these ports, we want that to be as smooth and as efficient as possible. We're going to put this on the car and do some dyno testing later on, uh, later this summer. There's a number of changes. So we won't know exactly uh, the benefit of these changes on their own, but we're going to get at least a good directional read to see if all of the changes added up. Stay tuned.